Hello, and welcome to the October edition of The Watch Club. I am Newburyport Documentary Film Festival Program Director James Sullivan. Uh, we just had our festival a couple of weeks ago, our annual festival. Um, thanks to those of you who joined us, either in person or virtually. And uh, we are pretty thrilled today to have the winner of our Best Feature Award, the director of that film, Delicado, um, which is, an, uh, I, I love the description that uh, the director gave, gives it, uh, it's that an eco-thriller, um, which is pretty much exactly what this film is in two words or less. Uh, director Carl Malakunas is with us today from the Philippines. Am I correct, Carl? Uh, I'm actually based in Hong Kong, so um, over here oh, in Hong, Hong Kong, Kong. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I apologize. Fine. I forgot that you were that uh, yeah. that that's where you were based. I I, I had forgotten yeah. that. So the yeah. film is based in the Philippines, obviously, on the island of Palawan. I, yeah, and I was based there for almost a decade. Right. Okay. So uh, congratulations again for winning our best feature award. As I just mentioned to you, that has nothing to do with me. Um, we program the films. Our judges decide independently which ones they love, and they loved your film. And so. We were pretty, uh, among other things, besides uh, uh, awarding your film, um, we were pretty happy to see that it uh, popped up on PBS the week after, immediately after our festival. So for those of you who haven't already had a chance, uh, it's pretty easy to find at this point. It was on the PBS. It appeared, uh, I think, a, two, two Mondays ago, I believe, on sure. the POV series uh, on PBS, the documentary series called POV. Very easy to find on their website at this point, and you can stream it, I think, at will, right? Um, Correct, for, for another couple of weeks. So great time. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, great. So if you haven't already watched it, but you're interested, and you should be interested, it's an excellent film, uh, please do. So, Carl, thanks so much for being with us. Carl is on a 12-hour uh, time difference with us, so he's up at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, he's got his latte going, and we appreciate you waking up early to talk to Good us. <laughs> great. No, great to be here, James. Uh, um, yeah. So your film is so powerful, um, uh, so full of life. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I think that a lot of folks are attracted to Bobby in particular, the, the your lead figure in the film. Um, but there's an interesting story. I mean, I know you did not set out to tell the story of these Echo Warriors um, risking, you know, life and limb to stop the destruction of their home island. Uh, you know, I, if I understand the story correctly, you started out in, a, in a, you know, with a much, much lighter idea in mind. Do you want to tell that story? Sure, James. So uh, I was based in, in Manila um, as the, uh, I'm, I'm a journalist uh, by trade, right. um, and I was uh, the Manila bureau chief for uh, Agence France Press, the wire service, the French wire service. And uh, back in more than a, a decade ago now, in 2011, I was going to go down to uh, Palawan to do a story on ecotourism. Uh, it was really just an excuse to go down and have a look at this incredible island. You know, I travel around a lot of the other, you know, other parts of the Philippines. So I thought, oh, I'll do, do an ecotourism story and, 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 and have a look at these incredible beaches and forests, etc. Uh, and so I was speaking to an environmental campaigner uh, down there and he uh, you know, was going to take me to his firefly programs and go canoeing on you know, these incredible rivers with fireflies, etc. And you know, a, zip line, a zip line project through, uh, through the forests. And uh, a few days before I was about to go down, he was murdered. Uh, right. He was. Um, he walked out of a. He was also a radio broadcaster. He walked out of a radio broadcasting. Uh, 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 the radio, the radio station, and he was shot in the head and, and killed on the street. Um, and so, I went down to investigate his murder in uh, instead of doing the ecotourism story. And right. while uh, while I was down there, I, I I I met all these incredible people who were putting their lives on the line to right. uh, to defend this island paradise. Uh, and the um, the most compelling, charismatic person that I met on that trip was Bobby Chan. Right. Um, and Bobby at that point had a very small tree made of chainsaws, um, right. about ha half the size that, that we see in the film. Um, and he was telling me about uh, his, um, his men who go into the forest in flip-flops and uh, and and basketball shorts or bare feet. And they were going in and using, you know, Bobby's an environmental lawyer. He was using the, uh, you know, the, the concept of the citizen's arrest law that they that they got from America and that was their mm. time as a US colony um, and using the mm. citizen's arrest law not to arrest people, 
but to confiscate the equipment uh, that these illegal loggers and illegal fishermen, um, illegal miners um, were using. And that was essentially how the story began. I thought, well, you know, I, I, I did, again, I, at that point, I'm a first time filmmaker. I didn't envisage this was going to be a, uh, a, a documentary at that point. Um, it took me a number of years to go down again, and I did a, a, a longer piece of journalism for, for AFP. Um, so uh, this time it was, you know, a, a full multimedia package. Right. Um, and then from there, uh, it just continued to build. Your initial contact uh, who got murdered, was he part of Bobby's, uh, you know, Echo Warrior, t uh, Eco Warrior teams who, who went out into the uh, forest? No. No, um, Doc Jerry Ortega uh, was another environmental campaigner, not related to, to that. Okay. Um, in the end, um, the um, the previous governor, not the governor that you see in in in, in our in, in our film, uh, Governor Alvarez, mm -hmm. um, but another governor, um, uh, jo Joel Reyes, was charged with his murder, and um, uh, Joel Reyes uh, ended up fleeing the country, going to uh, to Thailand for for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, coming back, he was accused of masterminding the murder. Um, of course, there were you know, other people who, who, uh, uh, you know, who pulled the trigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Joe Reyes ended up coming back to the Philippines um, and running in the last elections while still um, having these ongoing proceedings against him. Um, his brother uh, Mark, Marco, who also was charged with murder. Um, in, in relation to, to this, um, is now the um, the mayor of another town up near El Nido. So to get a sense of the culture of impunity that exists there, right? Having covered the Philippines, you 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 knew to some extent anyway as a journalist the the extent of the corruption there, right? Uh, obviously, uh, Duterte is a you know um, a, a frightening character, um, but were there things about the this environmental uh, warrior uh, work that uh, uncovered while you were investigating um, kinds of corruption that you that were unknown to you, like the governor, the way the governor is, you know, sort of in the bag with the with the business folks who are tearing down the, the forest, for instance. And um, I'd have to say that what we show in in in, in the film uh, is a microcosm of, uh, yeah. of, of of what happens uh, around mm -hmm. the, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, this culture of impunity uh, that exists that we show in, in Palawan um, is just as raw in almost every barangay, every village, um, every province um, around the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty brutal place to do politics. Um, it's even more brutal place to be um, someone who wants to stand up to those in power. Um, and you know, there's a reason why Maria Ressa, uh, the journalist, uh, mm -hmm. won the Nobel Peace Prize a couple of years ago for her efforts to stand up um, a, a, against corruption and uh, and the then president Duterte. Um, and uh, her award, I think, represented the battles of journalists, you know, um, mm -hmm. all across the country, um, environmental campaigners. Um, you know, as we show in the film, you know, the Global Witness Report comes out and says, that, you know, at that point, it's the deadliest country in the world to be a land defender uh, in, in 2019. So those those battles being fought by Bobby and Tata and Nieves are the same battles uh, and as they've been fought, you know, by um, their equivalents um, all, all, all around the country. Uh, how many missions, you know, in the film we see, uh, uh, you know, several episodes of uh, missions that, they're, that uh, the team is out on in the, uh, in the forest, you know, looking for the chainsaws and, you know, um, trying to grab them when they're left behind or, you know, uh, how many times, you know, were those composites or how many times did you actually, you and your crew, and I'm, by crew, I'm assuming maybe just you and uh, your there. cameraman, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Tom Bannigan uh, in, in the back there, um, in, in the black pants and, right. and me in the, in the brown and gray. Uh, and that showed basically what we were doing for a long time. Uh, so how many was, times did you go out with them and how, uh, you know, dangerous, uh, how many, uh, how often did you feel like, uh, you know, your lives were in danger because you were with them? We went repeatedly um, over a, a number of years. Um, you, know, a, a, you know, there was at one point we spent two months down there um, no. and we were just going in and out of the forest. Um, you know, we would 
um, you know, we'd, we'd go to headquarters and, you know, then Bobby would say, hey, we've got a, uh, you know, we, we've got a tip, you know, up north. Um, let's get in the car and go up north. And we'd spend, you know, a few days, a week, you know, you know going into a forest, you know, you know, spending a couple of days coming out, uh, you know, sleeping in some village, then going out somewhere else again, coming back to headquarters, then, then they say, okay, let's go south. Um, and so, uh, look, I think on my... Um, you know, there would have been we would have been in and out of the forest more than twenty times on on wow. in specific missions, um, but there were um, yeah. So you know, in in terms of the the dangers, it was uh, you know we although we showed Cap Rubin being um, having been murdered uh, in the in the forest while on a confiscation mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the the murders of the of the the Parian forces, in, in fact, occur outside um, yeah, of the of the forest. It's when they they go back to their their village and their community and somebody the, track them down, right? Yeah, in fact, they you know it, it's a you, you'll never pick it up, but in the uh, in, in, there's a couple of, of moments in the in those missions where Roy, the the young guy, is writing on a on a piece of paper, uh, and it's a seizure document. Um, and they're actually their 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 regard for the law um, and and Bobby's determination to uphold the law and the rule of law is so strong that in that moment um, when anyone could be coming in to attack them, they're still taking the time to write out a seizure document which says, you know, we are taking you know, this chainsaw. Um, we are P and N I. My name is such and such. Yeah. And they leave it there. Um, and so. Uh, it's not a matter of tracking them down. They put themselves right out there. Um, and wow. so then, you know, the, 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 the loggers, you know, go back and you know, to, you know, to the businessman or politician who, um, who, you know, who are employing them and say, hey, boss, we, you know, we lost our chainsaw. Yeah. Who did it? Well, um, here's, uh, you know, here's the seizure document. Um, and so, so these uh, parent forces have been, um, they've been murdered uh, on, literally on the streets, you know, uh, you know we've got... Um, you know, photos of of of, of guys um, who were, you know, riding uh, uh, their motorcycles and you know were were shot dead on you know as they were riding. Um, that's the type of thing that happens. Um, so they live this danger every single day of their lives. Um, right. And you know that's the you know um, going back into the forest. You know, there of course you know there, there is there are certain dangers. Tom is a is a conflict uh, reporter. Um, you know, I've done a lot of conflict reporting. You know, yep. we you know uh, we, we all felt it was manageable, um, and you know we, we we thought those you know, probably the. The, the bigger the, the biggest risk was breaking a leg or an ankle in in those remote forests and trying right. to get out of there. Um, you know, there was a you know a time when they when you know, Bobby you know called up and you know, um, you know said Cap Rubin had been murdered. Uh, right. You know, and you know, and, and you see this you know, episode in the film where they say we want to go into this this area. Uh, we want to show that we're not scared. We you know we want to go right, right into. It. So you know, in in those moments, it's you know you you, you know. You, there's there's certain risks and dangers there, and you know, having said that, you know you saw how Tata led this group, um, yeah. you know with this military precision, um, and it felt very comforting being led by Tata. Yeah, I could see I could see that right. So we have a good question from a viewer. Uh, this is from Sharon, and she's asking. Um, she's essentially asking, did you uh, did you find that these guys periodically lost hope because they're you know such a such a um, you know, uh, awful set of circumstances that they're dealing with, and the just the level of corruption is insane. Um, did you find that uh, you know it, it, Bobby is incredibly upbeat, Tata is incredibly upbeat, but did you find that they occasionally lost hope in the in the mission? They they certainly do. Um, hmm. You know, uh, when one of their 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 friends, their their colleagues gets gets murdered, it's. It, it, Incredibly traumatic, yeah. uh, tough time. We capture a moment of that after Cap Rubin's right. um, um, uh, murder, where Bobby sort of says, "You know, we're, we're close to giving up." Um, yeah. right. and and you know that occurred that period of um, of depression of uh, defeat was extended out over months. You know, um, and it's you know this is condensed into such a, a, a short moment in, yeah. in in the film. 
you know, they all felt, you know, they, they all felt like giving up at, at, at mm. that moment. Um, and you know, I think towards the end of the film, you know, Bobby comes back and says, you know, well, you know, um, you know, uh, it's you know, if you've got a little bit of rage in you. Um, you know, you don't give up, um, and that rage that keeps them firing. Um, you know, uh, it's it's incredible. You know, and, and they've through the pandemic. You know, so no post film. They've you know they've really struggled with with funding. Um, you know, they you know it's it's always been a battle for them um, to, to to get funding. Um, made much worse, you know, during the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. And if you go onto the Pen and I's Facebook page, you can still see them going out and and doing. Um, uh, confiscations throughout, you know, mm. the pandemic, um, and the, you know, I know that they felt like giving up it, um, you know, throughout the pandemic as well. Um, you know, there's, yeah, it's 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 it, it's not as if they can, you know, they're, you know, they're on this high, riding through this the, the whole time. It's right. up and down, up and down, and, and right. those those downs are, are, are very low. Um. I, I'm a journalist myself, and I'm very uh, interested in your transition. I, I mean, maybe not a transition. You're still a journalist, but yeah. first-time filmmaker. I mean, uh, you know that you know it, it. It does not come across like a first-timer's film at all. I mean, um, extremely well done, well edited, confidently put together, very well told story. What did you learn over the process? I mean, I guess you had several years. It sounds like you invested, you know, maybe almost as as much as a decade to ma- make this film. But what'd you learn over the process in terms of uh, you know telling the story through film rather than you know your the, the way we normally do it, which is write it up, right? Yeah, Ex- exactly, James. Well, you know, I think the first thing to say is uh, you know the importance of having an amazing team around you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm a first time filmmaker, and you right. know, I was so lucky to be able to gather this amazing team. Um, and mm. you know, uh, Tom Bannigan is the you know the, the cinematographer. Uh, yeah. Well, he's you know uh, he, Tom was an old friend of mine, and uh, he's a you know, t- journalist as well. And uh, you know, when I needed someone to, I, I thought I, I needed someone to who be able to go into the forest and be able to just you know handle hiking through the forest and handle all yeah. the you know the, <laughs> um, the the risks risk side of thing. I thought Tom's going to be the guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't. I didn't realize how beautiful a, photo- a cinematographer he was, and yeah. you know, so in, in in one respect, I just you know, there's a lot of luck that gets in, you know, uh, that comes your way as well. Um, you know, the you know, I, I had you know, um, you know, uh, Michael Collins and 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 Marty Sahuko um, yeah. as the producers that came yeah. in very early, and you know, they were just incredible. Um, mentors, guiders, um, you know, people like Laura Nix came in um, uh, after, uh, you know, um, you know, through the process and was in, was was vital um, to helping to you know to lay out the narrative. Um, Eric uh, Daniel Metzger, and uh, another editor, was just incredibly uh, you know um, uh, important in developing the stories. Um, there were so many people, you know, um, Nanita Desai in the um, in the uh, on on the on the sound on the music, um, you know, was was so vital as well. So basically, you know, I was very lucky to be able to build this team, um, and they you know to to all of them sort of you know came in. Because they, I think they believed in, you know, in in the story, in Bobby and Tata and Yemes. Right. You know, they all put in so much more time and effort than would have, you know, than I, I could have ever have imagined or wished for. Um, and so, mm. you know, th- and then throughout that, you know, I've just taken it as a as a masterclass in in learning how to make a mm. film. Uh, mm. Again, I, I was I was making you know, two minute, two and a half minute videos for, for AFP, you know, just right. you, know, you know, and uh, you know, when I started, you know, I was, oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot, lot harder. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> it's going to be ten thousand times harder to, to make it than than that. It was, it was a million times harder. It was <laughs> and more complicated. I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't give you fair warning. I didn't know that you were going to go through the uh, Oscar list of everybody that you needed to thank. I should have let you write that down, but you, uh, I, think, I think you nailed it. I think you got everybody. <laughs> oh, there's more, I'm sure. And uh, but yeah, yeah no, it was it's teamwork. Though. Obviously, is the answer, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, ha- uh, have you been able to screen the film in any special, meaningful way for the crew, for uh, Bobby and Tata and them? 
Look, we, um, you know, we had this amazing experience a couple of months ago. Um, there's uh, the Cinemalaya Film Festival um, in the Philippines. It's the main um, uh, film festival. Okay. And we were selected to close the festival. Oh, wow. Um, right. And it's, it's mostly for features. Um, yeah. But, you know, they, they, you know they, they, they called us in for, for the closing festival. And, you know, it was at the Cultural Centre of the Philippines um, in mm. Manila. It's this huge venue. Um, it's 1,800 people. And wow. with, co- with COVID, it was 1500 yeah. um and you know we thought, oh you know is it going to um how many people are going to get there and it was a full house um and wow. and uh bobby is based in manila so he was coming but uh we brought everyone up from uh from oh uh, wow. from palawan so uh, so tata and nieves and yeah. roy and 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 ipe and all the parin forces you know um junior the guy who does the chainsaws you can see dismounting the chainsaws yep. never been out never been out of palawan before um wow. And they all came to Manila, and they were in the crowd, and and they and then they watched it, and there was um, it was made everything worth it. It was this incredible moment. The the crowd was that they got they got it in a much more visceral way um, oh than, than I I'd seen. It in. must have been like a you know championship. You know, they must they must have felt like champ. You know, we are the champions or something. I mean, I can't I can't, I can't imagine. Right. It must have been a great experience. Yeah, and through the film, they were, it was like watching a, a boxing match. They were cheering I mean. and booing, and and then yes. and then when and then when they realized, you know, the crowd realized at the end, you know, they all stood up and then came on stage. Oh wow! The, the standing ovations went oh. for minutes, and you know, everyone was crying. I was crying. Um, oh my was, god! It was it was a, it was a brilliant moment. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that was uh, so 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 they. You know, the the response from 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 them has been you know incredible. Um, yeah. you know, of course, of course, beforehand, you know, we I also had to you know bring the film to, you know, to Bobby and Tata and Nieves and show yeah. them er, early cuts or yeah. uh, to you know for safety and security reasons. And um, so right. it wasn't it wasn't like a total surprise to them. Right. Well, I mean, it's a tough subject. I mean, it, it, uh, there's a it's a very specific story to the Philippines and the illegal logging, but but um and the corruption but it also says so much about the much bigger picture of you know the destruction of the environment um but i think we should end on the uh upbeat moment of letting those guys experience that event uh uh in the capital city um at that film festival that sounds really great and i kind of want to go out on that mental image (laughs) if that's okay with you um (laughs) Thanks, James. I, I just made, made, finally mentioned, you know, we are trying to build an impact campaign to defend yes. the land defenders in Palawan and, and beyond. And if people are interested in learning more, they can go to our our, our, our website, delicadofilm.com, and there's a take action page that people can sign up to to get updates. And, and finally, you one of our... Co- sorry, you mentioned the Facebook page uh, for, for Bobby's group. Do, do, uh, is, is that uh, linked through the, through your website, through the through the film website? Uh, it it is yes you can see it there and right. also um, there's a link on our page to then go to pnni.org um, which PNNI, is the right. dot org and th- they've got uh, one of our immediate calls to action is to try and raise money for for PNNI yeah. um, and you can people can make direct donations there um, but yeah um, we're, no, we're trying to do everything we can to to, to help um, you know, so for the, sure the, I, the I wanted to make sure that people knew folks who knew knew who have seen the film and and were impressed by it that they can continue to follow the PNNI's work, right? And uh, through their, I guess, through their website, through your website and also yes. through their Facebook page. I was going to make sure, make, make that clear. That's Thanks, great. Um, happy to uh, help out in any other way that we can. So by all means, let us know if we can keep spreading the word for you um, in terms of the action campaign. But uh, in the meantime, thanks again, or congratulations again, rather, for uh, winning uh, our Thank best reader award. And I, I have to say, I'm sure that the experience was a lot more exciting to be at, uh, at the screening in Manila, um, <laughs> but we're happy to uh, award you as well. So thanks for taking the time to talk Thank to you, us. Jonah. Thank you, James. No, we really appreciate the opportunity and the support, and uh, hopefully I can come over and meet you one day in person. Well, 10 thanks, years James. from now, when you're done with your next film, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have you back. That's a lot. <laughs> we don't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great talking to you. Thanks so much, Carl. Thank you, James. All right. Um, We would like to thank our sponsors and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next watch club next month. Uh, Stick around and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon.